that ready. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Woohoo. We are on Create Talks, and I have one of my favorite people. You are going to fall in love with this joy. I call her Joy Bomb. Joy, uh, Mari, Mari is amazing. Mari Glatzel is from Wisconsin. She'll share a little bit about her story, but I'm going to share first because she was with me for two years after she did BSSM one and two. And so I got to see this ball of energy that could create in music or art or dance or writing or spoken word. I mean, everything was like a part, she just would explode. But the great thing about, about Mari that you're going to find out is that she has a heart for people to know Jesus, like in ways that I love, I'm passionate about that as she knows too, but we really see, we've really seen God move through creativity to transform others. And so we're talking today about taking risks, like jumping over and seeing things shift and change like this painting that I just did and what God did uh, just through that painting and bringing people to Christ in the, by the Huntington Beach Pier. So there's so, 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 so much, but uh, I, I am just so happy. Welcome, Mari. Thanks. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, Mari has helped with so many of my conferences and other stuff as well behind the scenes. She is incredible. And so if you have any questions from Mari, um, she's talking about like, how do you bring creativity to transform others in different ways? And so if you have any questions for her, please put it in the chat and we'll get those questions to you. So my, my first question to you, Mari, in this wonderful world is um, like, why does risk and healing others through what you create why is that that so transformative and and share some testimonies about that yeah totally well Teresa demonstrates this really well and it's really fun um in my little bio thing I said you kind of get on the fast track of creative ministry when you're with Teresa because she believes one she believes what God says in his word that he wants to transform people but not only does he want to transform people it's it's using you and demonstrating who God is through your life, because we need the whole body, all of us to represent how good and how big God is. So um, our uniqueness, our unique giftings are inside of us for a reason. And so your creative gifting is in you for a reason to transform, to let Jesus out. And when you take a risk, it allows the Lord to actually meet you there and he gets to build up your faith and actually cover you and go and do what you couldn't do by yourself. So being with Teresa, we take a lot of risk. And oh, we do. It's kind of like throwing you into the pool and be like, I know you can swim and you can swim um, because the Lord is really good at teaching us and showing us the way. So for example, I remember being at a conference in Pennsylvania. I think this was one of the first times that I've ever, I think, sang over people. Um, but so she told me beforehand, ask the Lord for something to sing, and we're going to go after healing. And so I remember trying to like write down some words of like what I felt like the Lord wanted to say. And when I got up there, I sang out and we, I think it was for people who had back pain. So it was with people who had back pain. So they're all standing in front. And I remember this one lady specifically, after I finished singing, she, she couldn't like walk upstairs without having pain, like excruciating pain for like 10 years. So she goes and tries it out and starts walking up the stairs. And then she ends up running up and down the stairs. And then she starts sobbing. She's like, I haven't been able to even walk, let alone run, go upstairs without back pain. So she's like, instantly completely healed and I was like I didn't know that God could do that <laughs> come on well that that's the beauty of it isn't it Mari it's like this weird feeling of okay I'm not sure it's it's like this thing of the unknown isn't it like a lot of us don't understand like God is asking for us to use how we've been created to see other another person get healed or transformed in some way and we just think, well, because I've never seen it, why would I do that? But when you see it, you start to understand why David was asked to play over Saul and the demon left. You see it firsthand and then you go, oh, God is real <laughs> and he heals. And you took a risk in, in God. Oh, that lady was so transformed. That's such, a, I remember that testimony. I remember her. That was so cool. 
it was amazing and it's it's so cool because I think it all goes along with this aspect of um what it means to follow Jesus is is like I kind of think Bill Johnson says like God didn't just die like Jesus didn't just die to get you into heaven he wanted to get heaven into you and so if we're supposed to follow Jesus and represent the gospel signs and wonders are supposed to follow our life and creativity is one of those like the most beautiful ways I feel like God can articulate who he is because it is so personal and it, it reaches people and touches people in such a unique way that it ab it actually releases the presence because like his creative nature gets released whenever we create something. And so. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's like a divine partnership, isn't it? It's like, it's like, it wasn't just like, okay, I prayed, but no, you weren't just releasing a, a prayer, but you were releasing a creative expression that brought heaven in to that person. And the great thing about what happened, Mari, is like, she'll never forget that moment of being sung over. Like it was, it was something that, that was out of the norm. And so many times we get into this norm thing. Uh, for those of you that are listening, Mari is talking about this incredible thing called creativity and rest. But when, when you get out of that norm and you start to do something different, that allows God's presence to come in a unique way that breaks off that, that normalcy that we kind of just, we, we don't listen anymore. We don't really pay attention. So right. that's why uh, following but, God is like waiting and listening and actually asking Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? And providing an invitation, like he wants to speak to us and use us all the time. But I think the biggest thing is like prophecy, healing, all of that comes down to asking Holy Spirit, how he wants to do it, what he wants to do, and then just saying yes and taking that step. I love it. I love it. It's so fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I have another question for you, Mari. Um, on our adventures together, we went to Santa Cruz, which is mid California, and we've been down to Orange County, where I am now at uh, releasing the presence uh, through what we create in others. Um, share some testimonies because we went to the beach, and oh my gosh, we would what we would do, we set up paintings like this and then we would also have people painting live and then we would also have people that could interact and paint or receive prophetic art from people that are there or get a, a child's face painted balloons etc so we had like a happening that was creative that drew people to us and so mari was with me and uh, share some testimonies about what god did yeah those were some of my favorite trips ever i There's know it's so like fun Creativity is just so fun and the kingdom just leaks so much like joy and it's so contagious. Um, but I think one of my, my two favorite testimonies from those trips was one was when we were on the pier and we started talking to a Gabriel and a Moses was their names and which is already prophetic and he Gabriel had been ministering to his friend Moses and was trying to like help him turn his life around and they were talking about he wanted to try to reconnect with his daughter and it was this amazing story that he was like kind of just growing on just doing all the right things to get his life on track and he's like yeah I'm gonna go to church for the first time next week but um so we started this conversation because I was on the ground like finger painting and I was like kind of just doing this childlike thing of just like look I have a painting what do you think about it and he's like I don't know it looks kind of messy and fun and I was like yeah kind of like us sometimes and I just like created this conversation with him and then I started feeling like um we we started the conversation but also felt like it was a word for him of what the the newness and the creative like childlike nature that God wants to restore in his heart and all these dreams that he has that like so we just started prophesying over him and then Teresa comes over and there's like you can tell there's still something more and so we talked to him about what it means to be a father and he starts to explain how um, like just his background with like satanic rituals and like blood sacrifices. And we're like, well, actually, did you know that Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice for you? Like he, he literally died and bled all of his blood for you. And he's like, what? And so we end up leading him to the Lord. And there was this click moment where you could see it in his eyes. And then Teresa just starts saying like, yeah, you're going to be an amazing father. Like God has redeemed and forgiven you and all this. And he's literally sobbing. And it's like, how cool that we met this man through just 
being silly, painting childlike paintings on a pier and were able to like lead him to Christ and actually give him that encounter. And then I ended up giving him the painting as a reminder of the decision he made that day and then continued to prophesy the destiny over his life. Like those paintings aren't just an encounter. They, I mean, they're an encounter, they're um, a moment of presence, but they're also a solidification and a vis visualization of the dreams and destinies over people's lives. So it was like, it was amazing. It was so cool. We had so much fun. And that was just one testimony. I mean, Mari, I can tell you, there's so many testimonies and every person on the team had testimonies. It's, it's crazy when you release the presence through creativity, uh, how it engages people and brings these conversations about. And, and that's just because of risk, because we took a risk. God did so much. Um, somebody has a question. It's Jen. And um, let's see, let me pull that up. Uh, Jen, super interested to hear about the painting behind Mari. Oh, yes. Um, so this painting that I, oh, behind Mari. Oh, this is awesome. Mari, <laughs> I want you to share about your painting because she just took a, a class and share about the meaning behind it and what you feel God was saying. Thanks for watching, Jen. Hi, Jen. Yeah, I have, it's so fun. I've been painting a lot more and this is one of them. It's this actually is kind of a painting of risk in itself because I took an abstract boot camp um, and I'm not super fond of abstract always, but so <laughs> that's <definitely laughs> taking more risks and how to grow in my artistic skill. This one's called Heaven Portals. I'll see if I can bring you a little closer. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So Heaven Portals and it's about um, like heaven wants to leak out. And so there's all these little bubbles and it's like I feel like we God's giving us access into heavenly realms um and it's funny because the art teacher actually said that a lot of times when we use blood like red and drips it looks like blood but because of all the colors it actually looks happy and it doesn't look like so like dark and bloody it's and so, cause that's actually kind of representative of my heart of like, Jesus paid the blood and that allows his joy to come out and his grace and his redemption to come out. So it's, it's all this heaven leaking out and coming into the atmosphere and just like this presence. So I'd love to hear what you see, Jen, and just what, or Teresa, but. Oh my gosh, I'll share. And then Jen, share about what you like about it. And I'll, I'll share with everybody out here, but. But first of all, like one of the things I love is I, I saw like in this painting um, right there, if you look at it, it's like there's there's something going on with like the heavenly portals coming down and actually giving you a view of heaven. And so I feel like in the background is heaven. And then these these portals, because of the blood of Jesus is giving you access to see yourself the way that he sees you almost like a mirror image of who you are. And I feel like that's what's important is like, as we see ourselves from heaven's perspective, we really get the right lens of where we're headed. And I believe that's a word for you, Jen, too, of the season that you've been looking uh, for a new perspective and that this painting is really resonating with you for that. So take a photo of that painting right now and, uh, and let it just marinate on you. I mean, really seriously, like this is what prophetic art is, is it's meant to uh, to really touch us in deep places in our whole life and continue to minister. So I love that. Come on, Jen. So let us know what, what else you see in that too, Jen. And then I have another question for you. Oh, and more questions, guys. Go for it. Um, share about what happened. Now, this is cool. This happened in Wisconsin during Christmas break. Um, and there was a parade there. And you are from Wisconsin, Milwaukee, right? Um, share about what happened last year and what you did um, to the people that were there. So go ahead. That's an, that's an incredible testimony. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, like part of it is sad. So um, the unfortunate part is that we had a Christmas parade. If you've heard Waukesha on the news, that's where I'm from. Um, we had a driver drive through our parade and actually kill a bunch of people and injure a bunch of people. So as you can imagine, this has been, it's, it was an, extremely traumatic event for a lot of attendance um a lot of people who were there we got there a little bit after so we kind of saw the aftermath of it and just like wanting needing to I didn't know what to do at first and I was like holy spirit how do you respond to this and so me and my friends kind of just like 
prayed through the streets and then would go up to people and I would just be praying for the people who were on the ground waiting for ambulances to come. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was a little bit hard, but the next few days asking the Lord, how can we respond? And it felt like such a divine appointment. And everyone I've been talking to says that even though in the light of this tragedy, God's been super evident. And like the, the amount of people that were there to help and the amount of his presence the past like that, that week was just like, even though there's tragedy happening, God has been more and more evident. Um, and so I was like, God's definitely appointed us for such time as this. I literally have Come gone Come on, this create Academy for like trauma and freedom. So I was like, let's just do something like that. So Come on. like I called her and I was like, how do I do this? And then we had two sessions the following Tuesday. Um, actually just like the next day, we just started planning things to help people. Um, and we had two sessions with painting through trauma and we had a mom with her three kids come and we had someone who was actually at the parade who watched everything, saw someone get hit. They came in and it was beautiful because um, you, we had these kids painting their fears and painting a picture where they just expressed their fears. And then we'd ask, all right, now ask Holy Spirit or ask Jesus where he is in your fear. And so all these little kids, these three kids who have like, don't really have this experience or and like relationship with Jesus very much at all, saw pictures of Jesus coming into their bedroom and like giving them a hug. And so they're painting a picture of Jesus hugging them. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's amazing. And, um, and the mom even saying like, she got breakthrough in forgiveness and learning how to forgive people and her parents. And the nighttime session, um, one girl who was at the parade and saw things, she, you know, cause after a traumatic event happens, sometimes we react different ways and it gets stored in our body. And so the main thing that you need to do is actually just let it out somewhere and start that healing process. It's not going to be fixed right away, but for her, it looked like First, she paints the happy emotion. Then she paints what's her, what she's excited about. Then she starts to do the fear. And that one gets a little scary and dark at first. But then as she's getting that out, she starts to cry, which is really good. Because if you don't know how to process, that's the first step. And then the second picture is like, all right, now what? Ask Jesus, ask Holy Spirit, what, like, for hope. Ask him for something that you can hold on to for this next season that will give you hope and things that he wants to say over you. So she started like painting hope over herself and what God was saying and like actually asking him questions. And so that was amazing just to see three different breakthroughs that day was like worth it. Ooh, oh my gosh. Um, Andy put in the chat about Create Academy because what, what, what um, Mari is talking about, because she was with me for two years, is my Create to Be Free. Uh, uh, in my Create to Be, um, in my Create Academy, I have Create to Be Free, which is a healing through art, six um, a six week course. And in that, you get healed from trauma, from things like that, unforgiveness, fear, loss. And so Mari was able to take that with my help and bring it into this situation that had just happened with all this um, tragedy in her hometown and bring healing to people that had been there or that had suffered from that. Now, the power of that is like, if you, if you want to learn how to do that, you can go to create Academy. You can purchase that the e-course, but I'm doing it also in e-course live. So every week I'm with students as Mari knows, and I walk through developmentally my courses and we're just in create to be free. So, which is so cool. So I, I want to encourage you to get involved, get into the membership and, find out how you how you can get set free and what mari learned is that she can give this to other people as well so um so i bless you with that yeah and we just mari and i just agree like don't hold it in god wants you to get it out he wants you to release that um it's so important we have a question too here i'm going to read this to you um oh this is from regina my welcome regina so glad you're with us my creativity was tambourines, dance, mime, and worship, uh, uh, worship flags. Now struggling with um, health issues and don't know what my creativity is anymore. What would you say to her, Mari? Hmm. Oh, Regina, thank you so much for sharing. I know that's that can be hard at first. Um, one, we want to pray for you. Yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely number one. And... Um, 
yeah, pray for healing as well as just for a new download of creative breakthrough, which is something that I've been praying for, but I'm trying to see, I think I have a picture I want to show you. Um, yeah, I think I'll show you this one, Regina. Oh, come on, Mari. That's so precious. But it's, it's father God holding a child. And I feel like sometimes the weight of our disappointment and our hopelessness in the situation can feel really overwhelming at sometimes. And I just saw God holding you immediately and wanting to take all the things that have been like stolen and taken from you. And we actually just want to cancel that in the name of Jesus, that like the enemy wants to steal your creative giftings, want to steal your hope, but really like one, your identity is in Jesus. Two, he can do all things. He can heal you. And three, he he wants to continue to pour out of you in ways that you might not have expected. So Father, we just pray for Regina's body right now to come back into heavenly alignment. Anything that she's been experiencing physically, any pain to just go right now. We've seen a dance, a dance, it was a dance teacher, the dance pastor. She couldn't dance and her, cause her heel was like severely damaged. And I think she was, went through a dance workshop and, um, her heel got after like 10 years of not being able to dance on it was completely healed. So it's like her gift, her thing that she loved to do felt like it was being taken from her. But I feel like God wants to restore you in Jesus name. And he wants to take you in his hands and comfort you and heal all of the parts and inside and outside. Yeah, that's so good, Mari. So, so Regina, I want you just to like, you know, look at the surfing painting right now. And that remember the painting that she just showed you. And I want you to say, like right now, um, Jesus, heal me. We just could declare Jesus, heal Regina. We say a movement come back to every part. And just as his hands are there, just as the, the woman is out there surfing, we just release healing to your body. And we release healing to um, your disappointment that you would break that off, Jesus, and that you would bring hope into our lives. Now, Regina, what I want you to do, and this is for anybody that wants to release healing, just, just check it out. So move, or move your body around, whatever you couldn't do, check it out, Regina, and let us know how you're feeling. If you're better, if it's 10% better, 20, hundred percent so that we could celebrate with you. And if there's others that are watching, or if you feel like, man, I have this person who has this, share this, uh, share this live because other people might get healed as well. So Jesus is good. Amen. Mari. Yes. And he loves to heal. I mean, if he did it back in Wisconsin, if he, if he did it here with us, he can do it anywhere. So we just release that to you, Regina. Yeah. And thank you for sharing Regina, your heart and your disappointment. And we're just praying for you right now. Uh, we have another question for you, Mari. If you could say anything to those who are right now with us, who have never supernaturally taken a risk, to create and to bless other people, what would you say to them right now? I love this question. <laughs> um, first, I just, I always think of like all of creation is waiting for the sons and daughters to know who they are. Like literally all of creation is waiting for you to realize what's inside of you, who God created you to be. And once we all take hold of that, the world is going to change and the world is going to see Jesus. Um, and so if you feel like there's something that God has been compelling you to do or go after, I would say, do it. <laughs> I would say, just go for it. And the, you're going to actually find the Lord's kindness in a way that you might not have experienced before. And it's like, um, I was listening to someone the other day and they said, I'd rather be a wet walker than a boat talker. Like Peter, <laughs> on the waves. I would rather get wet and be like, well, I'm wet now, but I took a risk rather than being in the boat. Like, well, how come he's doing, that? I can't believe he's so prideful. You think he would do that? Like, no, I'd rather be there out there trying to hold Jesus's hand on the water. <laughs> come on. I totally agree with that. Like guys, it's, I mean, playing it safe might be comfortable, but what if you walked on water? What if you saw a person, what, what if you took this testimony and you drew something and you saw your, your friend or family member get healed by just releasing the presence of God, by looking at that picture or by saying that, singing the song, whatever it is, God wants us to take risks. And the only way that we do that is by stepping out, being uncomfortable, and then seeing what God does. I, I love that Mari. Come on. God is so good. 
Um, I'm going to see if we have any more questions out there before we do words of knowledge. This is from Britt from England. Any words for how to get out of procrastinating, feeling stuck, although I know there is so much more. So any words about procrastination, feeling stuck? Yeah, that's good. Um, I think for people procrastinate for different reasons. Um, personally, I've, I've felt like I've had so much time. I didn't know what to do with it. And so I've been actually praying for a creative breakthrough in um, making time. And it's think, I think for me, it's been having to actually just make structured time where like, I need to create. And maybe you need a why. Maybe you need a reminder of like, why am I creating? Why, what do I believe about what happens when I create? Or even just the simple fact of, oh, I just want to create so that I can have time with God and like actually just be in his presence and create with him. So for me, it's finding my why and then making structured time where I, I know every Thursday, two to five, I'm going to create because one, I need to, two, it's part of who I'm, what I'm called to do. Um, and three, just because I love and enjoy being in God's presence and creating. So that helps for me. That's really good. I love that. I, I think, I think Britt, like right now in your life, it's like, there's a reason why you're procrastinating. It's like, it's like there's something that is making you like feel safe. That's what I would investigate. I would investigate why it is you don't do what you want to do. Is it because you're afraid you're going to fail? Is it because you feel like you're not, don't have an ex enough experience? Is it because of whatever it is that when you look at that and you go, Jesus, what do you say about that? Then you're going to get unstuck. The other thing that has really helped me, like what Mari's been talking about, talking about, which is so good, is um, sharing that. So I would share that with somebody close to you. That's what we do in Create Academy is share because that way you're not alone. So being stuck sometimes is because we're not allowing people in. Um, and, and then the other thing, like what Mari talked about, is make a goal. I'm going to create for five minutes and I'm going to bless myself. So that's, a, that's something that I teach in my, my courses. That's super important. So when you start to create Brit, when those like critical voices come in, Oh, this isn't going to be good enough, whatever. That's when you say, well, wait a second, God, what do you think about it? Turn on some worship music or do something that's going to shift the atmosphere, stay in the presence. And then that will trump whatever the enemy is trying to do to keep you stuck. So Brit, both Mari and I declare it's time to get unstuck. Yeah. It's time to face those lies and let God's presence in because he has a calling on your life, right? I saw you, uh, I, I saw you actually being an illustrator of books. I feel like the Lord's going to do some stuff for you in creating in that genre as well, but you just have to get out of perfectionism and get into the, the truth that God loves it when you create and move out from that point. Oh, we yeah. do have another question here. I, uh, I have this picture for Britt real quick. Britt, oh, this yeah. Ooh, to that's so box. good. This is to get out of your box, Bricks. Britt, and for it to not have to look perfect. It doesn't have to look like this masterpiece. And there's like this ugly artist club. It's not ugly, but it's like, you know, sometimes it doesn't always look beautiful. And that's okay. So I just felt like just start getting messy and it's okay. So that's also for you. I love that. Okay. This is, and we're moving into prophetic ministry right now. So Rihanna from South Africa would love a prophetic word. So Mari, Rihanna from South Africa. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, so much art everywhere. But Rihanna, I, this is, I feel like this picture is for you. This is the feast, the wedding feast. And I just feel like I saw, I just saw a sweetness over you. And I feel like the Lord has such a sweet aroma and um, that he's, hmm, Holy Spirit. Yeah, I just, when I heard your name, I immediately just saw this picture and was like, there's this aspect of him romancing you and coming back into abundance. I felt like he wanted to break off um, things where it feels like lacking or even the, not mm. kind of like poverty mindset, but I felt like he was speaking abundance over you. Like this is a season of abundance and where he actually is like, I am such a good and generous God where I want to extravagantly bless wow. you more than you could ask, think, or imagine. So I just release extravagant blessing. The, this wedding feast that is this so much better than we could think when our bridegroom is just loving us and pouring out his love over us. So yeah, I just felt like he was just bringing you into a Ooh, 
Wow, Rihanna, let us know what that means too. And I, I heard the word, you're not alone. I feel like there's been some, an onslaught of making you afraid of, of not finding your tribe or belonging. So I just released that over you as well. Maybe that's the table thing, God setting you up with others. So that's so good. I love it. If anybody wants a prophetic word, just put your name in. Um, but um, do you have any words for the for people? Anything on your heart, Mari, right now as we close? Yeah, I heard earlier when I was praying um, that um, oh, it was, it was it was faith for um, eyesight being restored. We mm -hmm. had fun at our art studio the other day. She just came in. She was describing how she could barely see the painting because she had a blurriness, and my mom prayed for her, and she just. Her, her eyes started to open up. She's like, yeah, it's not really there anymore. And we're like, Praise oh, God. God. that is so cool. I feel like if anyone has like eyesight, we just declare and release that testimony that he wants to open up your eyes. Oh, and it was also during a creative workshop with um, BSSM students where I, we showed a painting and this girl, she had glasses. She went into worship. The words became blurry and she took off her glasses and she could see better without them. Well, so, oh my Jesus. Yes. So okay. So we just released this testimony. So if anybody has any problem with vision, just put your hand over your eyes. We just command these eyes to see correctly, both nearsighted, farsighted, blurriness, cataracts, any kind of eye problem. We just release that in Jesus name. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that is so good. Mari, I love that. Come on. Come on. Gee, how can an artist paint? Oh, wait, we have a we have another word here. Um, Andrea. Okay, here we go. Ezekiel from South Africa. Okay, we have our South Africans on. Do you have a word for Ezekiel? Um, I'm going to take a risk and sing. <laughs> Come on. Um, Ezekiel, I felt like a lot of these times when, it, when it comes to singing, I feel like those are the moments where I have a risk because it's like, I don't have something always prepared for like paintings are easy. Cause it's just right there, but singing or dancing, you really don't know what's going to happen. So, um, that's always where my heart starts to pound, but <laughs> come on, Jesus, what do you want to say over Ezekiel? <clears throat> and so when you're doing this, you ask the Lord and sometimes you get lyrics right away. And so that's what is happening right now. And I immediately heard a few things. So Ezekiel, um, yeah, she can do that. He's bringing new life. He's opening up the well. He's digging it deep and deep and deep. He's opening up your heart. So let him in. So let him out. He's opening up the well that you've been digging, digging, digging. He's bringing new life to the well that once was dry. And now the water's coming up to the top. Now the water's coming up, it won't stop. And it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. So let him out, so let him out, so let him out. Ooh, come on, Ezekiel, let us know what that means and put that in the chat as well. And um, team, just let me know too about those. And then we have one more, we do one more, Jennifer from Ventura. Jennifer, hi, Jennifer, nice to see you. Holy Spirit, what do you have for Jennifer? Ooh, okay. This painting I painted recently for a commission. Um, if you're ever interested about any of my art, you guys can find me, find, just personal message me. Um, but this one I made for a mental health, mental health and wellness for a teenage like rehab place. And so it's gonna be going there this month. But this is the Holy Spirit and then this is transformation. And I just felt like, um, Jennifer, you have a call in your life to reach and impact youth and to see trauma and healing broken off. And I just felt like there was a really specific word that you are to be like, um, there's just like this officialness this year where God is like assigned, like he's giving you a specific assignment and that to encourage you and to confirm things that have been spoken of your life of just like, this is the time to step into it. Um, 
even though some of the things might like the pieces that are important of like, well, I don't really know about this. It's still kind of shifting. I just felt like he's, he's told you who you are. It's kind of like David before he became king, he was anointed before he was even able to become a king. So I just feel like God is anointing you right now. And he's going to start to transform and put all the pieces in place, but just walk in the anointing and the commissioning of the Lord and hold on to the promises that he's spoken over your life. So I just, declare that over you in Jesus name. It's going to bring healing over people. Oh, come on, Jennifer. Let us know what that means. That's such a great word. I love that. And I felt Jennifer, like what Mari, when Mari was speaking, I felt like that deer, there's something about you panting. Oh, like as a deer for God's heart and for your own creativity to be unlocked. So I just, as you look at that deer, I command uh, the spirit of fear to come off and for you to start to partner with God's faith that he's calling you like that deer into places of abundance when you create. So I really felt like there was something that God's going to do there too. So study the deer, by the way, because I feel like God has some secrets there for you too. Um, yes, yes, yes. So Mari, if they want to find you on, uh, on Instagram, where do they go? What's your, what's your um, name? <laughs> My Instagram is <laughs> I need to make a few new ones, but my, right now it's M Gurley, M G U R L Y. Um, and then on Facebook, Mariana Glatzel and our resource center is, um, it's just called the creative art. It's probably backwards. So that's fine. Creative arts resource center, Waukesha. Um, it's been great. We have all of our leaders, like one of our leaders just wrote a book called um, Winning the Silent Battle for Mental Illness. We have artists starting to create and put them in hospitals. So we have a lot of cool stuff happening. So you can check us out there. Well, that's in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And again, Mari, um, just be, I mean, we have had such an incredible time of, in, with my team in the last couple of years to bring about what we call um, apprenticeship groups that really help people every week to create with art, writing, dance, fashion, music, you name it. And Mari has really now champ is a champion of that in Waukesha, both with writing and with art now. So you can be with them and, and grow there too. So spread the word, spread the word. So um, I'm going to just have you pray for everybody. So what, if you guys want an, an anointing from a catalyst, a joy bomb, Put your hands out <laughs> because Mari is going to release the presence of God in a new way and is going to impart to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Yeah. And I just also want to say, like, I'm so thankful that I'm here because of Mama T and my own mom, who's pioneered art in my life and been able to like open up her art studio for this and open up and pioneer the dreams and ideas. So I felt like there's an inheritance that you're actually also getting is like, it's not just me, it's all the people that have come before me and poured into me. So Father, I thank you right now for everyone watching and who will watch this later. Um, and that you are breaking through. I just see him just punching boxes right now, that he's going to break off boxes of you. And it doesn't have to look like everyone else. It's supposed to look like how he created you and the way that you've been specifically designed to release his glory on the earth. So God, I thank you so much for creative miracles, for creative insight and a deep, just put your hands on your belly, deep hunger him to see him and I pray that we are actually a generation who are going to be burning for him and want to we want to be stunned by our God I think we get too familiar but we want to be stunned by him so Holy Spirit just come with a fresh anointing come with a fresh hunger and as as they create and take risks and step out you're going to meet them so powerfully that they're going to be amazed in like in childlike wonder of how good you are God so yeah as you are I feel like there's just He's raising up dancers. He's raising up artists. He's writing up, raising up writers and fashion fashionistas who are going to actually change the creative industry and be influenced in wow. society. In Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm so glad you were on. Give my love to your mom and everybody out there. Congratulations on on your proposal. So she is she is officially now um moving toward marriage which i love so mari thanks again for joining guys remember you are born to create and share this with other people that need to take risks to grow talk to you guys next